We finished off with question 3.2. So question 3.2 says the structure below represents a part of the female reproductive system. Now remember our rule is always write the labels first. Okay, so what is A? It is the fallopian tubes. And this would be one fallopian tube, and here is the other fallopian tube. B is the ovary, and there are two. One, two. And then this C points to the uterus, and D is the cervix. All right, so now we know what we're looking at. We can say, okay, fine. We have to find out questions and the first question says identify D so D is the cervix easy enough okay and state one function of A let's just check A is the fallopian tube okay so let's put your fallopian tube and there'll be two so I'm going to put you the functions of the fallopian tube. And what does it do? Now, just think about it. First of all, it is the site where fertilization takes place. Fertil fertilization takes place. That's number one. Number two, it is the site where mitosis of the diploid zygote takes place. Remember, it goes it, in the fallopian tube. Once that zygote, uh, once fertilization occurs, so the little, the sperm cell nucleus joins with the ovum nucleus, we now have a diploid zygote. Then it starts to undergo cleavage, which is mitosis. And it goes to a two-cell structure, and the two cells become four cells, four cells become eight cells, and they keep on undergoing mitosis until they form a marula, which is a ball of cells, and then the marula develops into the blastocyst. And then our third function of the fallopian tube is that the ovum, if it's not fertilized, and or the blastocyst, if it has been fertilized, is passed through to the uterus. Okay, so from there, if it is an ovum that wasn't fertilized, it gets pushed through the fallopian tube and it goes into the uterus and then through the cervix and out through the vagina. All right, so unfertilized egg cell. But if it is a blastocyst and fertilization did take place, the blastocyst will attach into the uterus. So that blastocyst has to be passed down along the fallopian tube so that it can go into the uterus to, for implantation to take place. When the fallopian tube doesn't push the fertilized egg cell or ovum zygote um, along and into the uterus, that's when we end up with a tube pregnancy. And it, it's very dangerous because as that little fetus now grows, or the embryo at that point grows, it can cause the fallopian tube to burst. Um, and that's when it has to be taken out and it, it just causes a whole lot of issues. Okay, but it's not normal. It's something that happens by accident. Okay, describe the process of oogenesis as it occurs in part B. Now part B, if we look back at our diagram, part B is the ovary. So how will that take place? Now remember, oogenesis is the development of an ovum. So how does it happen? And it's only for four marks. So it's got to be a brief process. So we start off with, firstly, the diploid 
Remember, that's two sets of chromosomes. The diploid germinal cells in the ovary undergoes mitosis to um, form many follicles. Okay, this happens while the, the female is still a fetus. So it's while the, the mother is still pregnant with that fetus, that's when those diploid germinal cells in the ovary start to undergo mitosis to produce many follicles. Those follicles are still diploid. Okay, so I'm going to put in brackets here. This is still when it is a fetus. Okay, now what happens then um, is that, and this will be about 400,000 follicles, then follicle stimulating hormone is released at puberty. All right, and when that happens, it stimulates one follicle to undergo meiosis. Okay? Now, once it undergoes meiosis, what happens to develop into a haploid ovum? Those are the most important steps. So, it's your diploid germinal epithelial cells undergo meiosis to form many follicles. And then, follicle-stimulating hormone causes one follicle to undergo meiosis, and that will develop into the haploid ovum. Okay, there are your four marks. Easy peasy. Okay, then, state one way in which structure C is suited for its function. So, where is structure C? Is the uterus. So, how is the uterus going to be suited for its function? Now, let's think what the uterus does. Number one, that uterus is a hollow organ. Okay, it's hollow inside. And it's a hollow organ to allow growth of the embryo into an uh, embryo into a fetus. But also, what else does it have? It has a vascular and glandular endothelium. Endothelium is incredibly important. So it's got this vascular and glandular endothelium um, that allows implantation of the blastocyst. Okay, that's very important. And what else does that endothelium do? And the development of the placenta. And without the placenta, the embryo cannot survive. So, it allows for the growth of the embryo into a fetus. It is, it's vascular. That endothelium is what allows for the implantation of the blastocyst and the development of the pl uh, placenta. And there's a third function of the structure um, of the uterus is that it has the myometrium, which is the muscle layer, um, which protects... the developing fetus and pushes it out during the birth process. Okay, 
So the uterus is very, very important. Without that endometrium, you're not going to have implantation of the blastocyst. You're not going to have the development of the placenta. Okay. If it wasn't this hollow cavity, you're not going to have or have the embryo, which then develops into the fetus, being able to move easily. And that muscle layer around the, the, the um, uterus, that muscle layer is the middle layer, and that protects that embryo very, very comfortably inside the mother. But what it also does is it pushes that baby out through the birth canal. Okay, our last question. A person undergoes a surgical operation to remove part B. So let's just check part B was the ovary. Okay, so we're removing the ovaries. Just for your knowledge, removing the ovaries is called oophorectomy. So OO for ovaries and ocells and all the rest of it. So an oocytes. So the, the oophorectomy is the removal of the ovaries. A hysterectomy is the removal of the ovaries and the uterus. Okay, so a person undergoes the removal of the ovaries. Okay, explain why this person will not menstruate. Now, just think about it. What does the ovary do? When there are no ovaries, okay, there will be no follicles that develop. Because remember, where do the follicles develop? They develop in the ovaries. So there are no ovaries, there will be no follicles. If there are no follicles, means no estrogen, which is produced by the follicles, and progesterone, which is produced by the corpus luteum, which develops from the follicle that bursts. Okay, no progesterone will be produced because there are no ovaries. That happens from the ovaries. They are, your, your estrogen and progesterone are ovarian hormones. Okay, so estrogen produced by the follicle as it develops, and then luteinizing hormone from the pituitary gland causes ovulation. So the bursting of the, the, the um, graphene follicle to release the ovum. Okay, then that luteinizing hormone causes the graphene, burst graphene follicle to then turn and change into the corpus luteum, which releases progesterone. So no follicles, no estrogen, and no progesterone. Therefore, The endometrium will not develop um, into a vascular and glandular structure. Because why does it develop into a glandular vascular structure? Because of estrogen. And then progesterone maintains it until implantation takes place. So it's not going to develop a, va um, a vascular and glandular structure. And therefore, um, the endometrium will not need to be um, uh, shedded or discharged, therefore no menstruation will take place. It's as easy as that, okay? No ovaries, no follicles. No follicles, no estrogen and progesterone. No estrogen and progesterone, well, no endometrium. And therefore the endometrium doesn't need to be shedded. And therefore, well, what is menstruation? It's the shedding of the endometrium. So there you go. Easy as that. People, easy peasy three marks there. This is an easy 10 marks. Um, your basic knowledge of the repro female reproductive system, and you had your, th you had your 10 marks. <laughs>